dear students today we will be discussing about ocean thermal energy conversion systems so initially we will be discussing origin and characteristics of the resource then classification and working of ocean thermal energy conversion so in short we call it as OTEC then we will discuss the analysis of ocean thermal energy conversion system then finally we will be discussing about the present status and other environmental impacts so now first question is what is OTEC so I would like to give a reply against this question in this way the OTEC is a form of renewable energy technology that harnesses the solar energy absorbed by the ocean to generate electrical power. The energy from the sun hits the surface water of ocean. The surface water is much warmer, it's about 27 degrees Celsius then deep water which is about 5 degrees Celsius and this 5 degree is attains at a depth of approximately 1 kilometer from the surface. But this 27 degree C is attained up to a depth of 6 meter. So the solar radiation which is falling on the ocean surface the most of the radiation is absorbed in this depth so up to this depth from 0 to 6 meter so about 95 percent of the radiation is stored in this depth so the OTEC is a source of farm power and again OTEC is suitable for base load generation now let us learn about the suitable sites for installation of ocean thermal energy conversion system. So, if we see this plot from here we can see that latitude 20 degree north and latitude 20 degree south in this region in between we have equator is found to be best site for installation of OTEC conversion system. So, here color codes are used this red color indicates more than 24 degree C. So, in this system a minimum delta T that means TH minus TC, TH stands for surface temperature and TC stands for cold C water that means deep water 20 degree C. So, difference should be more than 20 degree C then only we can suggest this kind of system right. So, other locations also we can study the temperature differences, but mostly what we prefer in this region. So, temperature difference varies with latitude and seasons. The best sites are in the tropical belt as I said before latitude should be in the range of 20 degree north to the 20 degree south. And as far as prominent sites are concerned for installation of this technology Gulf steam of the Florida coast in the Gulf of Mexico and near Hawaii island are most suitable places for installation. Now, if we look back to the history of OTEC, we must mention the famous scientist who first conceived the idea of harvesting energy from ocean thermal. The scientist is Arsonevel conceived this idea in 1881 and the idea was verified 
by one of his students named George Clued on a test plan in Cuba in 1929. French scientists subsequently constructed two more rotec plants, one on a ship station near Brazil and one stationary plant of the West African coast. And from when this technology is getting popularity? From 1970s, when oil crisis was triggered. So, this is the famous scientist, Arsene Neville, and we can see the plant in Cuba, where one of his students tested his concept. And as far as the technology development is concerned, the countries like France, USA and Japan is leading in doing research and installation of OTEC system. So, let us learn about what kind of product we can get out of this plant. So, as I said, we have sun. Sun radiation is falling on the ocean and then surface of the water is heated up up to a depth of maybe 6 meter where 95 percent of the solar radiation is absorbed. Rest is going down, but if we go deeper and deeper, maybe about 1 kilometer, it will be too cold and its temperature may be in the range of 4 to 5 degrees C. Okay? So, what happens? This warm water introduced to the OTEC system. Okay? There are different classes we will be discussing in the coming slides and cold water is used to cool the fluid. So, from this system what are the things we will get? One is electricity which is primary and then we can have drinking water, water for irrigation and then cold water discharge which carries lot of minerals. So, this can be applied for mariculture that includes food for the fishes and other ocean animals. So, you can see the kind of product we can get out of this. So, there are multiple products we can get from an ocean thermal energy conversion plant. Now, let us discuss about its advantages. It supplies steady power without fluctuations and independent of weather variations, which is one of the very important aspect. The availability hardly varies from season to season. The useful products such as desalinated water and nutrients for marine culture can be created and disadvantages are low efficiency because if we see each operating temperature is say for example, TH is say 25 degree C and TC is 5 degree C. So, delta T will be 20 degree C. So, if I write the Carnot cycle efficiency, it will be eta C is equal to 1 minus TC to TH. Okay? Or you can say delta T by TH. So, delta T will be 20 and here TH will be 25 plus 273. So, if we calculate it, it will be something like 6.7 percentage, which is very, very less. So, that is how it has got low efficiency, high installation cost and then maintenance hazard. Now, let us discuss about its classification. 
otic may be classified into three groups open or clued otic cycle power plant, close or Anderson otic cycle power plant, then hybrid cycle otic power plant. So, these power plants can be installed as per the figure shown here like floating otic plant, then we can have land based or onshore plant or we can have self based otic plant. Now, let us discuss about open cycle otic plant. So, here what we will have we must have a flush evaporator before that we need a deaerator where warm sea water enters what is the function of deaerator deaerator protects the steam or protects the steam system from the effects of corrosive gases. So, this gases has to go out and here we can have a vacuum pump and it will release the non condensable gases. And then once we have fast evaporator that means what happens when this sea water enters here then it maintains in such a way that pressure will drop. So, once pressure will drop then sudden vapor will start ok. So, that means when we reduce the pressure below the saturation point corresponding to that temperature then it will evaporate right. So, then what happens this low pressure steam will be created and this will be expanded in a turbine and we can couple a generator or turbo generator then we will have electricity and this exit of the turbine has to be cooled and it is a direct contact type cooling system in case of open cyclotech. This is direct contact condenser and then it goes to Ocean. and here we take the fluid from the deep ocean cold water fine. So, that is how we are using warm sea water here and then cold water to condense the vapor this is turbine. So, primarily we have an evaporator, a turbine, a condenser of course, arrangement of deaerator and then some vacuum pump. is required ok. So, this is how a open cycle ocean thermal energy conversion system works. So, from surface of the sea warm sea water pump to the deaerator where we need to release the corrosive gases and then this sea water has to be flushed and then steam will be generated this will be low pressure steam which has to be expanded in turbine to generate electricity if, if we connect a generator and then for cooling of the fluid or steam we need to use cold water which is extracted from the deep sea and then finally, 
heated fluid will be rejected in the surface of the ocean. Okay. Next, let us discuss about closed cycle ocean thermal energy conversion system. So, it looks something like this. So, water pumps from the surface and then we will have evaporator. Here what happens? Secondary fluid is used to exchange the heat from the evaporator to the working fluid which is maybe ammonia or low boiling fluid. Those substance will have low boiling point and then vapor will be created and that vapor will be expanded in the turbine and then electricity will be generated by connecting a generator. And then exit of the turbine is need to be cooled by supplying cold water which is extracted from the deep sea and then it is again cold water is discharged and it has got multiple properties. So, we can use it based on the application and this working fluid will circulate in the loop okay? and then condensate will be used or dumped to the surface of the ocean. So, warm sea water vaporizes a working fluid such as ammonia through heat exchanger because this is nothing but heat exchanger here and then vapor expands in a turbine then vapor is condensed and then condensed working fluid is pumped back to the evaporator to repeat the cycle. So, this hybrid ocean thermal energy conversion system looks something like this. So, first we pump the warm sea water from the surface it goes something like this and then in the evaporator heat exchange will be there from the sea water to the working fluid and then it goes down and then flushing will be done here. Then again vapor will be created and then we have to condense it by using this cold water from the depth. Here first it is condensed again we can further use the same fluid to get the condensate because this will be in vapor and this will be cold water. So, we can get desalinated water and that can be used for different applications. So, this thing is nothing but desalination water tank. Okay? And this eject of this heat exchanger will be dumped in the surface of the ocean. So, that is how it combines the features of both closed cycle and open cycle system and the warm sea water enters a vacuum chamber. So, you have a vacuum chamber here because pressure will be less so that we can get the vapor where it is flush evaporated into the steam. So, here again we have flush evaporated which is similar to the open cycle evaporation process and the steam vaporizes the working fluid of closed cycle loop on other side of an ammonia vaporizer and the vaporized fluid then drives the turbine that produces electricity. And finally, the steam condenses within the heat exchanger and provides desalinated water. So, that is how it is shown here. So, now let us discuss about absorption of solar radiation, how it happens. So, this absorption of solar radiation in water takes place according to Lambert's law of absorption, which states that each layer of equal thickness absorbed the same fraction of light that passes through it. So, mathematically how we can write minus d i x by d x is equal to k into i x. 
So, you can visualize something like this if we have this layer and this is initially at i naught and x is in this way. So, maybe this is x. Okay. So, if we modify this expression something like d i x by i x is equal to k into d x and minus in will be here if we multiply both the side by minus 1. So, if we now integrate it and rearrange it then what we will have then i or ln of i x minus ln of i naught which is equal to minus k into x. Okay. So, this can be arranged something like x by i naught is equal to e to the power of minus k into x or I can say i x is equal to i naught e to the power of minus k into x. So, here this i naught and i x are the intensities of radiation at the surface x is equal to 0 and this is at a depth x from the surface. Okay. Here k is the extinction coefficient and also sometimes we call it as absorption coefficient. Okay. So, its value is about 0 0.5 meter inverse for very salty sea water and is about 0 0.05 meter inverse for clear fresh water. Okay. So, here almost all the absorption occurs very close to the surface and that is how its temperature is rising. But when you go deeper and deeper say about 1000 meter which is equivalent to 1 kilometer this temperature is not influenced by the solar radiation right and also we know 95 percent of incident solar radiation is absorbed within a depth of 6 meter. This is required to be noted. Okay. Now, let us move on to analysis of OTEC plant. Let us establish a simplified mathematical expression for an ideal system to study the effect of temperature difference flow rate and other parameters on the output for an ideal system right now the working fluid undergoes a temperature difference of delta t between a source temperature th and 
sink temperature T s. Okay. That means what we can write delta T is T h minus T c. This may be equation A. Okay. Now, if we are interested about heat flow rate, how we can calculate the heat flow rate can be expressed as P i is equal to Q rho C p delta t which is equation B where Q is the flow rate which is represented in cubic meter per second rho is density of the sea water which is represented by kg per cubic meter and C p is the specific heat of the sea water and delta t is the temperature difference. right? Now, if I am interested about the mechanical power available from the heat engine, the mechanical power from the heat engine so i'll write p not is equal to eta car not this p i this is c so it means this this is car not is something like p not by p i okay so here we are using Carnot efficiency and uh, our system what we are considering is a ideal system. right? And also we can write, so this is something like this, okay. I cannot write, I cannot, this is a cycle efficiency. So now I will write the efficiency of an ideal Carnot cycle which is represented by eta Carnot which is equal to delta T by T h which is equation D. Now, we can express P naught which is the mechanical power available for the heat engine in terms of delta T by using the equation D in C and then we can use equation B as well. So, the mechanical mechanical output power of an ideal Carnot engine will be equation C implies which is nothing but P naught is equal to delta T by T h multiplied by P i e. Again we can substitute the value of P i then it will be something like P o is equal to Q rho C p del t square divided by T h. This is equation F. Okay. So, this is nothing but the output available from practical real 
heat engine right. So, this is the ideal condition that is how we can use this Carnot cycle efficiency here, but in real condition the efficiency or output what you will get which will be much much lower than the ideal case. Now, from here we can also conclude that this P naught is also varies with the square of delta t or temperature difference also proportionally with discharge or flow rate and of course, it is inversely proportional to the th. Okay. So, this is the way by which we can calculate the mechanical output power of an ideal Carnot engine. Right. So, I can write here the output is proportional to the square of temperature difference between the surface water and the deep water and directly to the flow rate of working fluid. Okay. Now, let us take a numerical problem to know the volume flow rate required and then how to handle that kind of volume flow for a certain rated power plant. So, we are interested to calculate the required flow rate for a 8 megawatt OTEC plant considering the ocean surface and deep sea water temperature are 25 degree C and 5 degree Celsius respectively. Given that specific heat of sea water as 4200 joule per kg Kelvin and density of sea water as 1026 kg per cubic meter. So, in order to solve this problem, we can take help of the expression we know P naught which is the output power is equal to Q rho C p del t square divided by T h. So, we want to calculate Q. So, our expression will be something like P naught T h divided by rho C p del t square. Okay. So, our output power is given as 8 megawatt that means 8 into 10 to the power of 6 watt. Then T h is 25 degree C and T c is 5 degree C okay. and C p is given as 4200 0 joule per kg and density of sea water is 1026 kg per cubic meter. So, if you substitute those values then we can very easily find out the required flow rate this 8 into 10 to the power of 6 then we will have T h is 25 plus 273 then rho is in kg per cubic meter. So, 1026 then C p is 4200 then delta T is 20 okay, which is in square. So, as per my calculation it is about 1.7 cubic meter per second right. So, if we have to convert 
to some other units then we can do it say for example if we are interested to convert to tons per hour then how to convert is right suppose if we are interested to convert it to ton per hour then maybe first what we will do 1.7 and we will multiply with density it is 1026 then what we will get is kg per second then we know 1000 kg is 1 ton okay and then 1 kg will be 10 to the power of minus 3 tons okay so that information so we can do that means we have to divide by 1000 and then multiplied by if we have to convert it to hour and 3600 so once we do this then what you will get approximately what we will get about 5088 tons per hour so you can verify this calculation so in my calculation it is found to be 5080 tons per hour that means for a 8 megawatt OTEC plant we need to handle 5080 tons of water per hour so it's a huge amount of water we need to handle so in order to handle this water we need to have very big pumps at the same time very big heat exchangers are required like in evaporator and then condensers okay so if we calculate the Carnot cycle efficiency so it is something like delta t by th so delta t is 20 and th is 25 plus 273 so this value is about 6.73 percentage or about 6.71 percentage okay so again this efficiency will be reduced if we have to consider the auxiliaries because auxiliaries will also consume a lot of energy. So finally about 2 to 3 percent efficiency will be available for utility. So that is how we can see the efficiency of this kind of plant is very very less but of course there are some other aspects what we can extract by utilizing this power plant. Now let us have a look about the different power plants installed across the globe like in Hawaii you can see 50 kilowatt power plant already installed in long back in Japan they have installed 120 kilowatt unit again Hawaii 1 megawatt unit in 98 in 1998 then Again, Hawaii, it is about 10 megawatt in the later stages, and in India, it is planned for 1 megawatt, and there were some issues. Then in China, they have installed 5, they have installed 10 megawatt, and then Martinique, they have installed 10 megawatt. So, of course, in the pipeline, there are many more such kind of plants primarily in France, USA and Japan. So in Indian context this plant is installed in 1980s in uh, Kavarati which is located in uh, Lukhodip Island and uh, Andaman Nicobar their plant and a preliminary design of 1 megawatt closed rank and cycle floating plant was prepared by IIT Madras in 1984 and in 1997 National Institute of Ocean Technology signed a memorandum of understanding with Saga University Japan for joint development of 1 megawatt plant and the same institute plans to build about 10 to 20 megawatt Solar based plants in due course by scaling up the 1 megawatt test plants and then possibly a 100 megawatt commercial plant. So, 
So, this is a picture of 1 megawatt Indian floating OTEC plant. So, you can see here is the power and we have surface and uh, we have this anchor and other things. So, you can see the depth this is about 1.1 kilometer ok all the arrangements are shown here. What are different applications of ocean thermal energy conversion system? So, it has got multiple applications like desalination, air conditioning, then seal soil agriculture, then aquaculture, then mineral extraction and then hydrogen production via electrolysis using OTEC electricity. So, it is economical if the plant is in the range of 150 to 400 megawatt. What are the environmental impacts? Biota including eggs, larvae and fish entered along with water in the plant which may damage the important component of the unit. Changes in local temperature and salinity may also affect the local ecosystems because we are extracting hot water again we are dumping the cold water in the hot water zone. So, that might not be comfortable for the marine ecosystem. It release of large quantities of cold water into the warm surface environment will also have biological effect. Also carbon dioxide dissolved in warm water is released to the atmosphere as reported in many of the published literature. So, we can summarize at the moment what we have discussed today. What we got out of this analysis is very few potential sites have been identified across the globes and the power developed is dependent on temperature difference between the hot water and the cold deep sea water and fluoride and the analysis shows the conversion efficiency is low ok and this technology is suitable for base load generation. So, all the things we are discussed and along with that we have discussed the working, its classification and then different aspects related to estimation of power developed by a OTEC plan. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you got a very good information in this lecture. Thank you.